there. We have an interest in you and your business, so we're continuing to run these weekly business lunchtime talks. And let's see how together we can put the Bible back into business. Don't forget to uh, click in and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and to get our weekly updates. Today, we're still following this man in the Bible called Amos, and we'll call our talk the Plumline Prophet. Amos earned his name of the Plumline Prophet because he had a vision of God standing by a wall with a plumbline in his hand. And we'll explore a little more about the plumbline, which some of you will already be quite familiar with. Firstly, to set the scene, we're going to read uh, from the book of Amos, and it's chapter 7, verses 7 to 9, and it just follows on from where we were last week about the fire uh, and about the locusts. And this is another uh, prophecy uh, to Amos. Thus he showed me, behold, the Lord stood on a wall made with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not pass by them any more. The high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. I will rise with the sword against the house of Jeroboam. Now, as our thoughts uh, turn to Amos today, uh, I can't fail to notice that Amos, like so many farmers, could turn his hand to any job. Today, Amos is talking to us using an object called a plumb line. It's believed that the plumb lines date back to Egypt around two and a half thousand years before the birth of Christ. And ancient architects, painters and carpenters, as well as modern day ones, used plumb lines to keep their work straight. It was important to keep the work straight and yet it can be difficult to do so. It's difficult uh, in the middle of a project to determine a true horizontal or vertical line without a measuring tool and so the plumb line is called for. A plumb line applies the law of gravity to find right angles to indicate the most direct route from top to bottom and to keep things plumb. A plumb line doesn't change or doesn't move with the whims of the carpenter or the builder or the stonemason. They can't make they can't make the plumb line do what they want. They have to follow the instruction and the direction of the plumb line. It remains true and all work must line up with it or else the work will be crooked. And tradespeople today will still talk about being level or square or plumb. In the Bible, plumb lines are referred to at various times in terms of construction. The plumb line became a consistent image in the Bible for the judgment of God. Just as a plumb line can be used to measure the vertical straightness of a wall, God judges the uprightness of a person or a community. He judges how straight they are. We talk about dealing with people. We talk about dealing with straight people. Oh, they're straight or they're crooked. That again has connections back to the plumb line. In the construction industry, the plumb line can actually be used for three purposes. Firstly, as we're familiar with, it can be used for the construction of a straight line or a straight wall. Secondly, it can be used for measuring or testing what has already been built. So if the builder comes onto the site and there's already a wall there, or there's a renovation job to be done, they can then apply the plumb line to see if the wall is straight or if it's bulging. And the plumb line can also be used to determine if something is to be dismantled 
because it is found not to be straight. God was using the plumb line to measure Israel's faithfulness to his law. And sadly at this time, Israel did not measure up. They did not line up. Israel were not plumb. But we could ask, well, what measure, what plumb line did Israel fail to live up to? Well, they failed to live up to God's word. And Amos gave Israel a list of the sins that they were guilty of, a list of the things that they weren't measuring up to. There was sexual sin, there was idolatry, there was economic and social inequality. Indeed, Amos is often regarded as one of the earliest promoters of social justice. We know from the book of Amos that the rich and the powerful of Israel are condemned because they sell the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. They who trample the head of the poor into the dust, they who oppress the poor, who crush the needy. When God said that he was setting a plumb line among his people, he was declaring an end to their attempts to justify their crooked ways. God wanted Israel to be straight up. The Lord was setting the standard and God does not negotiate or change his laws. He does not change with the whims of culture, the demands of society. God's moral law is the plumb line against which we determine right and wrong. And just as tradespeople use the plumb line, they know that the plumb line doesn't change to suit them. It doesn't change to suit their opinions, their demands. And so God's moral standards are not subject to our opinions or our demands. Wise people are those who line up their lives according to God's plumb line, rather than trying to move it to justify their own agendas. Everyone needs a plumb line in his or her life. Everyone needs a reference point to keep us on a path of good and not evil. And Amos has shown us that God and his word are to be our plumb line. Indeed, when we read through the Bible, when we're thinking about building and builders today, we discover that God is in the building trade. God is still the builder and what he builds, he intends to last. His tip measure is justice, his plumb line is righteousness and his cornerstone, his starting point is Jesus Christ. Now, for those of you who are in the building and construction sector or the demolition sector for that matter, every builder knows that when a wall falls, the wall always falls in the direction in which it was leaning. And if we stop and think about this, the same is true in our lives. People are like walls. We fall in the direction of our sins. So today, as we think about putting the Bible back into business, let us thank God for the plumb line of his grace, for his word, the Bible. And may we desire like never before to follow Jesus and the instructions of the Bible. Everything built by God, and this is the good news, everything built by God is built on him and everything built by God is built up around him. And you and I, the Bible talks about us by faith being living stones, being built up as a spiritual house unto God's glory. And don't forget that the plumb line is God's word and the Bible keeps us straight and true and upright. May you today and this week, may you always find peace, joy and happiness and staying true to the plumb line in your life and in your business. So I trust together we can put the Bible 
back into business that we can be straight and we can follow the plumb line of God's word. Thanks for your time and we'll catch up again next week. Bye for now.